The average bodybuilder, the moment he walks through the gym door, goes through his workout and then leaves. Does practically everything wrong. First he starts fraternizing, which only serves to divert him from the proper mindset. One in which his focus is activity, purposefully directed to what he should be doing to achieve his goal. Instead of checking his progress chart to discover what he did last workout, and then spend time alone psyching up for the very intense activity to follow, the average bodybuilder fritters away his time and focus socializing. It's time to hit it. Notice that Marcus confidently saunters in and properly says hello to a friend. He doesn't waste time conversing endlessly. How you doing? How you doing? Getting a little workout going today. A little okay. high intensity training. Uh -huh. I'm gonna do a chest and back workout. Okay. So. Do the power. No, I'll be okay. I got my own stuff with me. Okay. Um, it's gonna be short and quick. Okay. So only yeah, what? 15 minutes is all I need. Okay. Thanks a lot. Man. Okay. Now he heads right for the men's locker room to change. Notice as well that he eliminates stretching or performing aerobics. You're wasting your time and recovery ability by stretching. You'll maintain or even increase your flexibility by performing all of your weight resistance exercises through a full range of motion. And as for aerobics, it's not just a waste of time, it's counterproductive. And it uses up a sizable portion of the body's limited reserve of resources known as recovery ability, which could be better used for growth. Marcus looks determined, he looks ready, and in a few moments, he's gonna meet with me and go through a workout that's gonna change his life. I've often been accused of not warming up my clients. That is simply not true. Warming up is imperative. I want the beginner to be especially aware of this. You always warm up before your exercises. Uh, in this case, Marcus is going to do a warm up on the incline press. Generally, we have him do three warm ups, a very light one just to get the blood flowing. Then we move to a moderate weight to set him up neuromuscularly and then the heavy one to get him ready for the big set to come later. All right, Marcus, let's get a light warm up. We'll help you to the top a little bit. Very good. All right, now remember, slow, slow. The cadence is very important. It's very important that he keeps his thumb wrapped around the bar so that it doesn't slip out and cause a shoulder injury. The intermediate and advanced bodybuilder knows this quite well, although there are some who don't. But the beginner especially should be keenly aware of the fact that you keep your thumb wrapped around the bar. He's doing a light warm up just to get the blood flowing into the muscle, getting the feel for the workout to come. And I think that's good enough, Marcus. How you feel? Yeah. yeah? All right. This is not just another workout. This is the workout. Every workout should be important to you. Okay, this is a heavier weight. Let's get about four with this. Slow. Remember the four second cadence. Never stop in the bottom extended position of any exercise. You only stop in the top contracted position. Boom, right up. With a slight hitch, but under control. Slow. We don't want momentum to come into play. Momentum is an outside force. Focus on my use of the word force here. 
Momentum is an outside force to the degree to which it's brought into play reduces the force of the muscular contraction, thereby reducing the intensity, thereby reducing the results. Now he's done the two first two warm-up sets, the light and the moderate. Now we do one quite a bit heavier to get him especially ready for the high intensity workout to come. Okay. Okay, Marcus, this is your last warm-up. It's gonna warm up your pecs, shoulders, and triceps. Go. It's heavy, but you're not gonna to go to failure. Good, Kate, slow, don't stop at the bottom. That's good enough. You're not just warmed up, you're hot. Now you, you use momentum. You, this is not weight throwing, this is weight lifting. You lift it under full muscular control, much better. Put it all the way down and stop, that's enough. Okay, now you're warmed up in your pecs, your shoulders, your triceps. Let's proceed to the first set exercise of the superset, the uh, pec day. Okay? All right, let's go. Okay, Marcus, it's been six days since your last workout. You feel recovered. I feel 100%. 100%. I'm ready to go. I feel motivated. All right. I want to grow, Mike. Let's do it. All right. I increased the weight. Let's see if you can maintain the same reps as last time or even go higher. Your goal as a bodybuilder is to get stronger every workout. You either go up in weight, reps, or both. Okay? If I take a deep breath, I hear you Germans are a special breed. Let prove it to me. Remember the rep cadence. 1,001, start. All right, Dev, you didn't get a full stretch in the back. We want you to go from full extension, which means when the muscle is extended, literally. See the muscle extending? All right, now up slowly. 1,001, see you through it. 1,003, that's better. 1,004. 1,005, hold it, 1,001, 1,002, okay, go back, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, okay, 1,005, I'd rather, rather have you do five seconds than three seconds, get real hard, all right, well, if necessary, we'll have Ray assist you on a rep or two, but not yet, very good, perfect cadence, there's no momentum involved, Look at the intensity on his face. He's totally absorbed in what he's doing, which is the only way you're going to become a physique champion or achieve your personal goals. Come on, Marcus, I love this. I love to see people work out like this, motivated, going through failure. Come on. All right, let's have Ray move in and perhaps assist you on this next rep. Good. Slow. Work the negative. I got another one. I got another one. All right. Remember, you have three levels of strength. The positive, which is the lifting and the weakest. The static, or the holding, which is stronger than the positive. And then the negative. Bring him all the way in. Just bring him all the way in and watch him hold. Now you pull it there. You see, he couldn't lift it. He couldn't lift it. Now he's holding it very easily. The static is much stronger than the positive or lifting. Now show the negative how, how easier that is even. Remember, you've got three levels of strength. The positive, we're lifting. The static, which is the holding. And the negative, which is the lowering. And the strongest. Look at that. He couldn't complete a positive rep, but he held it easy, and he's lowering it even easier still. Very good. Now, all right, let's go to the rest, pause, and time press. Let's take a deep breath. This is a rest pause set, which means he does single rep maximum attempts, followed by a five or seven second pause. Go from start from the top. Go. All right. There's no reason to let down now, Marcus. Very good. That's slow enough. Now, never stop the bottom and go deep and get a slight jerk. All right, he can't, I have missed him a little bit, so I'll help him on this one. Come on. That still counts as a rep. Let it down slow. Slow. 
Very good. Oh. Now sit up, take a deep breath, reset yourself psychologically. All right, that's seven seconds. Take a deep breath. You ready? All right, give it all you got. This is a lighter weight, of course. Slow. There's, we don't want any slightest trace of momentum coming into play. Remember, momentum is an outside force. We don't want that brought in. Very good. You're getting me striked up. Go down slow, work all three levels of the belly. Positive, static, very good. Okay, let it down. Take this, take this deep breath. Okay, here comes your third rep with rest pause. You gotta be careful. Every rep is a maximum rep, unlike the conventional form that you did in the back deck where only the last rep was the maximum. With rest pause, every rep is the maximum. So we're gonna live in him to four at the most five. Very good. I'm not gonna help you. Come on, you need help. All right, a little bit. Slice this. Now take a deep breath and work the negative. The negative, many studies have revealed. Oh, oh, stimulators oh, and the positive. Oh, All right, sit up, take a 10 second pause. Or 12 even. This is your last rep. You see how intense that is? You gotta be very careful. You have to be very careful, viewers, when doing rest pause. If you're gonna do it at all, you should be a, an advanced intermediate or an advanced bodybuilder and only use it with one exercise per workout. All right, let's go. It's your last rep. Slow. That's 1,003. 1,004, that's okay. 1,005. Now don't stop at the bottom. Never stop in the extended position. Come on, Marcus. Come on. This is the best of a man. Look at his pecs. Look how pumped up. Uh, very uh, good. All right. All right. That's all you're going to do for chest. One set of back deck and one set of incline press. Can't do anymore. Can you imagine doing 20 sets like that? Sure. As the orthodoxy prescribed? Hell no. If you did 20 sets like that, you have to have you leave here in an ambulance. This is real high intensity training and you executed perfectly. Very good. Let's look at those pegs. Just like a great pump. Only two sets and look at the pump you got. Unbelievable. Twice the size. Not 20 sets, only two sets. All right, very good. Now get, go get a drink of water. I want you to rest. Thanks, when Mike. When, yeah. <laughs> When you're doing a superset, there's no rest in between, but once the superset is completed, you can take a break for two minutes. So get some water. My cardio is up. Yeah, this is a great cardiovascular workout. Okay, viewers, as with the chest, with the back, we're also going to do a superset, which means that he's going to start his warm up with the compound movement. For beginners, a compound movement is an exercise that involves multiple muscle groups. Uh, the first exercise will be an isolation exercise, which works only one mu muscle group, in this case, the lats. By warming up with a compound movement, we warm all the muscles up for the isolation movement, and we also have the opportunity to set the weight so we can do truly a superset where there's no rest in between and screwing around with the weights. The weight's gonna be set, he goes boom from here to the pull down. Now let's do our warm up here, Marcus, with a fairly light weight to get the blood into the lats. But you're already hot from your chest workout. I'm sorry, yes, from your chest workout. That didn't warm up your body, it made it hot, so there's no need with these to do extensive warming up. I would do literally just one more, get some blood into the biceps, and that's good. Now, 
I know that not everybody who's viewing this has a Nautilus pullover, but there are those who do. Let me instruct you now on the proper use of the Nautilus pullover, which is one of the best machines in the world. In fact, Nautilus machines, I still contend, are scientific precis precision instruments compared to anything else. Now, the most important thing to note is that Marcus's joint, the primary joint involved in this exercise, the shoulder, has to be in line with the joint of the cam. Now, he's too low, so Marcus, bring your seat up. All right, now you see his shoulders are in line with the joint of the machine. They'll be working in concert, that is together. And that means he will be getting what's called fully effective resistance. If he's too high or too low, he doesn't get fully effective resistance. If there's 120 pounds on the machine, he won't be lifting 120 pounds. It'll be either lesser or greater, depending upon whether he's higher or lower. So he's set pretty well. Now always anchor yourself in by putting on the seat belt. Remember, viewer, you are a bodybuilder, not a weightlifter. Your primary goal is not to hoist the heaviest weights, but to stimulate growth. I'm sorry, to stimulate the body's growth mechanism into motion. Not just the local muscle you're working, but the entire bodily growth mechanism. Okay, Marcus, put feet up here. Take a deep breath, set psychologically. This is only your third exercise of the workout. We've got two more to go. That's not much. There's no need to hold back. Come on, Marcus. Yes, I want to hear it. I want to see visible signs of your motivation. Stretch. Always work your muscles through a full range of motion, viewers. Exercise is about movement. The greater the range, the movement, the greater the exercise. It only stands to reason. Partial reps are not necessary, except in a few rare circumstances, which we may go into later. Very good. A little, perhaps, fast. The cadence is a bit too fast. There you go. Again, the idea is to eliminate all momentum. Now, there are those who advocate 10 seconds up and 10 seconds down. They call themselves the super slow guild. There is no evidence that clearly indicates that it's necessary to go 10 seconds up and 10 seconds down. I happen to agree with Arthur Jones that four seconds is adequate to eliminate any and all possible momentum. He's doing this exercise perfectly. He's stretching, getting a full range. Remember, this is about full range exercise. As I said just a second ago, exercise is about movement. The greater the range of the movement, the greater the exercise so long as there's adequate resistance provided. Yes, I like that look in your eye. Very good, look at the lot. By placing his elbows on these pads, he's precluding the use of the bicep. The bicep is a weak link when doing pull-downs or rows. Now the elbows are pushing against the pad with no assistance from the bicep. That handle bar there is merely to stabilize his, his arms. Very good. It's getting very, very intense. Good. Come on. This is the growth rep. This is the growth, not the first rep. The first rep is too easy. It's not stressful enough to turn on the body's growth mechanism. Only the last rep, the rep that requires 100% intensity of effort. Turns on the body's growth. Very good. Come on. That's what I like to see. Grit your teeth. Shake all over if you have to. to get that rep. Now hold that for five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Now up. Show him how strong your negative is. Even though he couldn't complete the positive, as was true in the uh, incline press. Here, he couldn't do a positive, but look, he held it statically. Ooh. And did it easy, Nick. That's good enough. Feet up. Go right into the pullover immediately. If you rest more than three seconds, you regain too much of your strength, and it doesn't serve as a proper superset. Very good. 
Now remember, if he did the pull down first, the lats would not go to failure, the biceps would, because they're smaller muscles. By doing the isolation exercise first, he pre-exhausts the lats. His biceps are fresh, therefore now his biceps are actually assisting his lats go beyond normal failure. That's the pre-exhaustion method. Very good. You got it? Hold it. Hold it. This, this is where you turn on the growth mechanism. Now up slow. See up. So slow, slow, slow. I know there's a tendency to want to give up. You've got a conscious mind. Fight through that. That's good enough. That's good. That's failure. A lot of people are confused about what it means to train to failure. Training to failure means you train to the point where you can't do one more full range positive rep in proper form despite your greatest effort. That was excellent. Very good. A plus. All right, Marcus, this is the last exercise of the workout. Thanks, Mike. I know you're tired, but <laughs> I am. you're coming into the home stretch. There's no reason to hold back. If there were 10 naked girls here, you'd go to failure. Yes, I would. You better believe you're bad. I would. All right, let's go. Make sure the hand spacing is equal distance. That's very important, again, for beginners. I've had many clients over the years who will grab the left hand, for instance, too wide compared to the right hand being inward, and that sets up an imbalance which will lead to injury. Very good. You see he makes each rep almost like a set unto itself. He goes down all the way, resets, takes a deep breath, and comes back up. You don't bounce the weight off the floor. Wrap your thumb. Ray, why don't we show that demonstration about the importance of wrapping the thumb around the bar? This is very important. I don't understand what this came from. It's people are grabbing bars with the thumb on top. Stand, stand up there, please, Marcus. He's going to grab my wrist like that with the thumb. Now he's going to hold it as hard as he can. Now he's going to wrap his thumb. Now hold it. You see how much more you stability. And strength is derived by wrapping the thumb around the bar. Beginners, please don't forget that. And intermediate and advanced bodybuilders too. If you made a habit out of it, please break that habit. And all your exercises, you wrap the thumb around the bar. All right. This is his last exercise. It is the best exercise in the world because it stimulates more muscles than any other exercise you might think of. We're gonna have him do three warm-ups like we had him do on the incline press because the back is a, the lower back is what's called a very delicate articulation. You can damage it very easily if you don't pay attention to proper form, especially on this exercise. So Marcus, step up to the bar. Your feet should be slightly wider than shoulder width. The bar is flush against the shins. The bar is not away from the body, it's flush against the shins. Head up, back straight, and maintain that. Stand up. Don't arch backwards, take a deep breath at the top and lower. With the deadlift and squat, I don't keep count of it or keep track of the cadence. You do it under full muscular control, making sure that no momentum comes into play. All right, now this is very light for Marcus. We're just getting blood into that lower back area, getting him set up psychologically for the working set, which is very intense considering, again, how many muscles are involved. He's gonna be extremely exhausted after this exercise, but it is the last exercise, so there's no need to hold back. All right, put some more weight on the bar, please, gentlemen, a 45-pound plate. We do a light set to warm up, get the blood flowing, then a light to more moderate set as 
In this case, we went from 135 for the light warm-up to 225 for the intermediate warm-up. I want you to get three or four of these. Again, keep the proper form in mind. The bar is flush against the shin. Hands are equidistant apart. Head up, back flat, even concave. Now you see some people at the very last foot moment, forget all that, they round their back, drop their head, pick up their weight and tweak their lower back. If you do it in this fashion, you'll never hurt your lower back. Look at the thickness in his chest, his arms, it's phenomenal. And he only trains for about 40 minutes every eight days. I'm sorry, less than that. He's training once every six days now. All right, you feeling warmed up? Yes. Let's have you do one rep with 315. Please put another 45 pound plate on the bar, gentlemen. I want to stress the importance of keeping a training journal. Just as a doctor can better advise you through time by keeping a chart, you too can better advise yourself through time by keeping a chart in your chart on the upper left, please indicate the date of the workout. On the right hand side, indicate your body weight at the beginning of the workout, not after the workout. Now, obviously, you'll list the names of the exercises, the amount of weight, and be cautious. Be careful on this last point. Please accurately record the number of reps because even a one rep increase can be quite significant. Now this is not his working set, this is his last warm up. He's gonna do one, maybe two reps, depending upon how he feels. He's warmed up with two sets already, remember. Now this is the one that's gonna set him up neuromuscularly, neuropsychologically even, for the heavy, intense activity that's gonna follow this. All right, Marcus, don't lose. This is your last exercise. There's no need to lose motivation or feel down in any way. Okay. If you had 20 more sets to go, I could see you holding back. But you're not a self-arrested, concrete-bound bodybuilder. You've got a good mind. Let's go for it. Yes, treat this as it is going to be your set. Are your hands equidistant? Yeah. All right, get your butt down lower than your shoulders, head up. Don't, don't jerk with the arms. The arms are straight. Think of the arms as chains. They're straight up and down with hooks on the end your hand. There's no pulling. This is not a, a high pull like pop Olympic ah. do. I'm sorry. Look, this is a dead lift. All right, good enough. <laughs> All right, you're a little tired. How much more weight you think you can handle for five to eight reps? Any more at all? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm living a piece. Well, you push extra hard today. Yeah. So on you. I would think so. <laughs> All right. Come on, Marcus. Really, this is your this is your last set of the workout. There's no good reason. There's no bad reason. There's no reason at all to hold back. This is the greatest growth stimulator of the body because it involves the most muscles. Yeah. Very good. That's it, put it down carefully. All the way down, don't, don't trick it off the floor. Fine, you're just tired. Come on, if you can't do one more, I'm gonna kick your butt all the way out the door. You can do one more. Right now, it's all, it's all like that. Come on. Huh. Good champ. You're gonna run. Watch your champ. Yeah, one more. Uh. Alright, yes, I know you're tough.
Charge. Your tires stop with the histrionics. Just go through the <laughs> You're an animal. Oh, that's failure. This is the best growth producing exercise, but there are risk factors involved with this exercise not seen elsewhere. You've got to be very careful to perform this exercise as Marcus Reinhardt just demonstrated. Very good. That's the end of the workout. I'll see you in six days. All right. Marcus, this is the second workout of the four workout cycle as presented in Heavy Duty 2, Mind and Body, which we know is the best book ever written in the history of this sport. I agree. But that's not the issue here. The issue here is it's a second workout in which you're going to do the legs. We're going to do a superset. And remember, one more time, I'm going to reiterate it. Whenever you're doing a superset, which means starting with an isolation exercise such as the leg extension, which isolates and only works the quads, we start with the second exercise, which is a compound exercise, again, one that involves many muscles. We have to start with the second exercise so that when he goes from the first exercise to the second, he doesn't say, oh gee, I failed to warm up my glutes, my hamstrings. That's already taken care of and the weight is set. He can do a true superset, which means going from the isolation movement to the compound in as little time as possible. So let's start with your first warm up set here. Make sure your seating is arranged so that you get a good stretch on the hamstrings. Your elbows, your I'm sorry, your knees should almost be up your nostrils. You, you can get it in closer than that. Grab the handle on the right hand side. And let's pull the seat in closer. Yes. You want to remember exercise is about movement. I said it twice before. The greater the range of the movement, the greater the exercise. The more muscle fibers are activated. Now don't grab here too hard. Your blood system is a closed hydraulic system. If you shut off any part of it, your blood pressure goes through the roof and you risk having medical problems. So you just kind of just hang on to that lightly to stabilize yourself. If you want, you can start first rep with your hands here, kind of like a bench press to assist, overcome inertia. All right, now you take your hands off and just kind of let them lightly dangle or grab them, just grab them ever so slightly. Walk out. Keep your head back. Lay back. That's perfect. Raise right, head back. Back is straight. Are you getting a full range exercise or can you go back further? You can go back further. All right, then let's pull the seat up. All these, all these issues I'm bringing up are crucially important. It's the reason for doing the tape. There is a right way to work out. If you're reading the muscle magazines avidly, especially if you've been doing so for some years, you're probably confused because of all the contradictory misinformation presented in those magazines, if you will. Then go right back. Never stop in the extended position. You go boom right out. Only stop in the contracted position where there's Take it back as far as you can. Let's the stack. Let's the stack. All right. I think that's enough light warm up. Marcus has, as you can see, tremendous legs. They're very strong. Let's have him do a second warm up getting his legs ready for that very intense set that will follow the leg extension. Again, the isolation exercise that will free exhaust the quads. And then he goes here. Don't grab tight. Remember, your circulatory system is a closed hydraulic system. Whenever you close off any part of it, the pressure in the system skyrockets, and you could blow an aneurysm, who knows? 
Never stop in the back, only in the contracted position. Very good. I see what you did last year. Put the whole stack on the stack. Yes, I can. Let's do a little bit lesser than the whole stack and see how well you handle that first. As a trainer, safety is my paramount concern. Not you hoisting heavy weights recklessly, carelessly, mindlessly, illogically, irrationally, or anything else. Hands on knees to get it started. Take some pressure off the lower back. Can you do at least eight reps after the, okay, yeah. All right, that's enough warm-up. The warm-up again is vitally important. I can for the back. Say too much about warming up. It's crucially vitally important. But you don't want to over warm up. There is a universal principle that will guide you here, and that is. You, the individual, do the minimal amount of warming up you believe is necessary. I, again, I've been accused of saying don't ever warm up. You have to warm up in the fashion that I'm showing you. I don't know how to make it any clearer. I want you to do an even slightly slower cadence or tempo on the legs because of the great range of motion. I like you to lift it for five seconds, even six. Hold it for three to four and lower five or six. The legs have evolved over the eons to be able to tolerate a lot of work. Put that seat down. You want to put a strap on? Yeah. All right, Marcus. You're looking better every year. Let's make this year your. Oh yeah, it's your best ever. Super Body 2001. This is going to be your stellar year. You're going to shoot up among the stars with the top champion. Back, stretch up as you're coming up. All right, Marcus, let's go. It's a short workout. You know it. There's no reason to hold back. No oh. back. Is that too heavy to get 8 to 15? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. We can always stop, reduce the weight. It has been observed, shown empirically. That needs to observation that the legs respond better with higher reps. I've seen it with all of my clients and I personally experienced it when I was training for competition. Very good. Don't sacrifice form for weight. Very good. See how slow he's doing it? Come up, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, oh, four and a half seconds, that's pretty good. But I'd like you to hold it slightly longer in the contracted position. Please, hard. It's too heavy, Mike. It's too heavy. Okay. When you pull your toes back, the harder the contraction. Okay. Alright, sure. Yeah. So make sure. Hold it. Three seconds. Now down. You've got six days to rest up. That's quite a bit, although not necessarily adequate. We don't know that. That's why we keep a, a progress chart. If you're not getting stronger every workout, we may have to reduce your training frequency from once every six days to once every seven, eight, nine or even 10 if we have some clients doing it. We do have clients training once every 10 to 14 days. Very good. I know that hurts, but it's not, it's not indicative of an injury. That's lactic acid. Come on, try one more. Come on, man, push it. Push. Okay, good group now. One big up now. No! Ah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
go right away. Oh. Pull your seat up and oh. Okay. Hands on knees. Hands on knees. Stretch your legs. Oh, I love this. Here we go now. The legs are very tough. Keep them in tight and dry. Go. You got the whole thing. Oh. Come all the way back and don't stop and go oh. right out. Come on. Stop. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be not okay. We got a little too excited. We overestimated, but uh Still pretty good. we can always make it correct for the next workout. That was I hate you. I hate you. That's a, that is a high intensity leg workout. Anybody you. who thinks high intensity training is easy is wrong. Is wrong. Do what Marcus just did. A set of leg extensions to failure, absolute failure, where you can't do another rep, and then do a leg press right afterwards, and you'll see this is not easy training. This is not for nerd, nerds. This is for the real men, right? This is the leg curl. You'll straighten the bicep so you get more of that hamstring. Okay. All right. Okay, go set. All right. Make sure that your knee, the knee joint, is in line with the joint of the cam, as I demonstrated earlier. Turn your, yes, turn your feet inward so you get all the heads. Come up slowly. That might be too heavy. I, you got me excited here. To do that great quad workout. We're up on both weight and reps on both exercises. How's that weight? That's good. I can handle it. Alright. Let's keep Very good. In. All the way up. You want a full contraction. The only place you can achieve a full contraction is in the fully contracted position. But only if you have that is the weight. Of course. Very good. This is also warming up your calves. You see how the calves are involved when you go over there. We're going to move right from here to the calf raise with no rest. Oh, they're all the way down at the bottom. It's very important for your cardiovascular system viewers to move from one exercise to the next as fast as you can. Maybe not as fast as the next All right, let's do it. Let's do the static hold. Lock it in, lock it in, hold. Got it. All right, hold it. Go on and move. Oh, All right, down slow. You're losing your static strength. You've got your negative strength feeling. Why not work it? You're right already you good. Outstanding. All right. Good job. Now let's move immediately to the cab. There's no reason to rest. Let's keep your heart rate up as high as we can. Okay, now this is your last exercise of the light workout. Again, there's no reason to hold back. I want you to show the viewers the proper way to do this. Stand up underneath with the shoulders on the pads towards the back. Step up onto the toe board. Make sure your ball to your feet are on the very edge without risking falling off. Keep your back perfectly straight and your knees locked. In order to work the gastrocnemius, you need to have the knees locked or you'll work the soleus, the muscle on the under part of the gastrocnemius. Okay? Go. Down. There's no cadence here. It's a small range of motion. We do it under control. No momentum is all that's really important. Get a good stretch at the bottom. Remember, the fuller the range of motion, the greater the exercise. Get a full extension all the way down. That's it. Now, higher. Higher. When you're on the next rep, Marcus, when you're as high as you think you can go, pitch it up another quarter of an inch. There you go. Look at those calves. Higher. Higher. All right, hold it. Now go down slow. You're at the bottom. Stretch your calf. On the calves, we go even higher, 12 to 20 reps. <laughs> Very good. Right. You keep it down to your rest. Oh. 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 Oh.
you go off, you want to work the gas drop uh, again, not the uh, 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 Go up higher. Uh, 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 Alright, step off the machine. We didn't get 12 to 20 reps, so let's work it statically. Take a deep breath. Well, the times you can go and hold it as long as you can. Uh, hold it. Higher. Higher. The fuller the contraction, the greater the growth stimulus. Your purpose as a bodybuilder uh, is not to come into the uh, gym to see how many sets uh, you can do or how long you can mindlessly endure. Uh, a body's only workout is not an endurance contest. Uh, Very good. Uh, uh, to conclude, your purpose as a bodybuilder is to come into the gym like an intelligent, rational, logical human being and do only what nature requires to induce growth stimulation and no more. Then get the hell out of the home resting growth. Very good. That's the end of the workout. Six days, I'll see you back here for shoulders and arms. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, very good. <laughs>I'm just curious, Marcus, why rather than uh, resting six days, you rested, what was it, eight? It was about eight days. I just I just didn't feel 100% recovered yet. And I just don't want to just go in because somebody says six days is the ultimate kind right. of thing, you know. I just, I don't feel in rituals. I don't, I don't believe in rituals, I mean. I just... Ritualism like has yeah. nothing to do with science. Yeah. So your reason was that you didn't feel, I didn't feel 100%, fully recovered. I didn't feel 100%. I said, I'm going to take another two days off. You know, if, if, if I come back stronger, then I know it's, you know, it's going it to be worth a little more time, exactly. You know? Yes. M muscle atrophy doesn't happen anyway. It's going to take, you know, Let me weeks. explain something. If an individual is overcompensating, that means getting stronger and bigger on the sixth day, then why would he automatically start decompensating or losing muscle on the seventh or eighth day? It's not going to hurt. Correct. The point is, by taking an extra rest day or two off, there's no threat of a loss. There's no threat of a negative, you can't lose anything, but there is the actuality of a positive, and the positive is that you have that much greater assurance that in fact enough time will elapse between workouts to allow for both full recovery and full growth production. The conclusion of this being that if you work out again before recovery and growth production have been completed, you short circuit the growth process shy of 100 possible units and start digging another hole, making another inroad in the recovery ability. So you were smart. You took the two extra days off. All right, let me set the weight for you here. Today is shoulders and arms. Remember, four, two, four. We do have resistance in the contracted position, so let's work it. Back straight head out, all the way up and all the way down. We are not doing partial reps. I think the seat is too low, Mike. Too, too easy? Too low, the seat is too low. The seat is too low, then bring it up. Your shoulder should be in line with the shoulder or the joint of the cam. That looks pretty good. Now, four seconds up, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, perfect, 1,004, now hold it for a long 1,001, 1,002, okay, now start to lower it, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, there is no momentum, your cadence is perfect, your gels look real good that uh, sufficient warm-up you want to do more reps? I'm okay. I feel warmed up. I feel okay. I you. always leave that up to my client, yeah. Marcus. Yeah. Because I can't get inside of his body and experience what's going on, especially with joints or articulations, as doctors call them, that are quite delicate. The shoulder is a deli delicate articulation. Let's get so, one heavier going for one set and then maybe... All right, this is heavier than the last one. Let's draw your focus down tight. Let's bring it to a point. Nothing else exists for you right now except this set. And the fact you want even bigger shoulders, if that's possible, than you have. 
Is that a warm up or just a set? Not a warm up. All right. I think that's all you need. You're warmed up. Remember, we're doing six to ten reps, so the first okay. several reps of the actual set serve as a further warm up. This is not a power lifters routine where you're only doing one to three or three to five reps. That would require a different warm up regimen. If you're doing 6 to 10 for the upper body or 8 to 15 for the lower body, the first many, many reps serve as a further warm-up. All right, let's go a little heavier, and this will be your set. All right, deltoid lateral. Go. Too heavy? Yeah. All right. Sometimes I do misjudge, not often. Maybe once in every 100,000 cases. If you believe that, I'll sell you a used wig. All right, let's go. Hold it. 1,001, 1,002, okay. 1,001, 1,002. 1,003, 1,004, you got the cadence, continue. Rep number three. Remember, viewers, keep an accurate recording of your reps because even a one rep increase can prove quite significant under certain circumstances. Very good. I can sense, I can feel your focus batting down on what you're doing. That's very good. I couldn't ask for any more motivation directed to doing the rep in the proper form. Now all you gotta do is go to normal failure. You don't have to do force reps, negative, less pause. Come on. Now I'm gonna, you didn't get enough reps on that one. Let it there. See, there you go. You got it on your own. You dug down deep into the well of motivation. You got to whip yourself up into a motivational lather. Come on. Think about what you like the most. What stimulates you? What motivates you? Get it up. Head back, head back. Elbows higher. Now hold it if you can for five seconds. That's it. You're shot. That is failure. Very good. Very good. Now, if we have any dumbbells here, the dumbbells, I want to have you go right into the uh, dumbbell bent over laterals. This is not a superset, however. There's no need to superset two isolation exercises. If Ray would bring the dumbbells in, that'd be great. All right, Marcus, this is the uh, second exercise of the workout for rear delts. We're not gonna do a press behind neck or anything specific for the frontal delt because we worked your frontal delts on chest day with the incline press. Even though the incline press is usually thought of as a pec exercise, which it is, it's also a very good deltoid exercise and a tricep exercise. Then also in this workout, you're gonna conclude with dips, which happens to be the greatest pec exercise in the world the best frontal delt and best tricep exercise. There's no need to do press behind necks, frontal raises, or anything for the frontal delts. You're already working your frontal delts. We want to prevent overlapping as much as possible. Let's show them how to do this correctly. Real, this is not a fake videotape like you see sometimes. He's really doing this. He's gonna do it superbly to failure. Very good, hold it slightly, down slow. Very good. Number three coming up. Very good. It's hard to do this one without a slight hitch in the beginning, but then muscle it up the rest of the way. Very good. Rep number five. Very good. I can see the rear delts isolating and popping up here. 
Come on, this is a high intensity workout. <laughs> a heavy duty hit workout. In the proper form, the proper fashion. <laughs> Going to failure is what we're after. Come on, get it up. All right, now try this one with a slight hit. Just give it a slight jerk. Shake your hands out. You, okay. Try one more like that. All right, good enough. You did one more rep in your last workout, which ain't great, but it ain't bad. You're still moving forward. All right, that's it for your delts. Laterals and rear delts. Now we're going to go on to the arms. Your shot. You can't lift your arms up. You literally can't lift your arms I up. I can't. It's up. The whole entire uh, yeah. shoulder section is shot. If you were to do press behind necks and a frontal raise, it's again, considering you're also doing incline press and dips, you would grossly overwork the frontal delts and other ancillary muscles, and you quickly show signs of overtraining. So there's no frontal delt work here. Let's go over and do a bar delt. Marcus, this is uh, the first of your arm exercises, your deltoids being completed. It's the standard barbell curl. Most people in the world do not have a nautilus curl, which is what I prefer, as many people know. So we're going to use a standard straight bar barbell curl. Never use an easy curl bar, because the easy curl bar does not work the bicep, but the brachialis on the side of the arm between the bicep and the tricep. Now you notice his hands are spaced equidistantly. One's not too far, one's not too close. He made sure of that from the start. Now without any hitching, he has a perfect curl. Look at those arms. At the top, there's no resistance, so there's no need to do a static hold. He's gonna go four seconds up, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, well, that's four and a half. Take a deep breath at the top and go down slow. And again. Very good. Your biceps look like they're ready to explode. Come on. Who was it that said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going? Oh. Richard Nixon. Oh. That should motivate you. Come on. Oh. Marcus, get, get even more motivated. The more it hurts, the more it's going to motivate you. That last rep where you're trying as hard as you can and you barely make it. That is what turns on the growth mechanism what's inside the body. That last almost impossible rep where you're gritting your teeth, you're shaking all over, you need assistance. That rep is very special. That rep is very different. There is something going on inside of his body right now. Put it down. Come on, baby. Come on. That's good. That last, almost impossible rep where you're gritting your teeth, you're shaking all over, is very different from every other rep in the set. It's very special. There is something that goes on inside the body on that last, almost impossible rep that is literally responsible for flipping on the growth machinery inside the muscle. Very good set. Thank you, Mike. All right. Now let's go to triceps, get some water if you need it. Please. Marcus, you did your lateral deltoid, your rear deltoid, your biceps. Now let's conclude with a properly executed superset for triceps. You already warmed up the triceps. Now you're going to go to failure on the press down, the isolation exercise. Yes, you keep the arms in tight. Let the hands come all the way up until the arms are curled very tight. Without any jerking, you just move it down. That's perfect. There's no momentum at all in that particular rep. That was literally 
glass book, text perfect. Very good. <laughs> I have a hell of a pump when this one's over. Not that the pump is the most important thing in the world, but it does feel good. And there is something to say about feeling good, isn't there? Oh. Yeah, very good. Very good. Keep that same form. Keep your elbows in tight. Very good. Here comes your growth reps. Those are all preparatory. They're warm-up reps. If you stop now, you wasted your time. You didn't turn on the growth mechanism. It's too easy for you. You can already tolerate it. Come on. Uh, uh. I didn't help you. Take a deep breath. Think of, your, think of your favorite girlfriend standing here in the nude, titillating you. If you have to, whatever it takes, do it. Yeah. Come on. Bit it down. Get it down. Now lock the elbows hard for five seconds, getting a good static contraction. Two, one. Now up slow because you have greater negative strength than you do static. Yes, that's very slow. Showing that you have more negative strength than you do static. You've got to work all three levels of your muscular ability when you work out. Very good. Now let's go over here to depths. All right, Marcus, come on. Run over here as fast as you can to make it a true superset. Get your belt on. Yes, you're quite coordinated, I can see. God damn it. Hurry up. Go. Lock the elbows. You want a full muscular contraction. That is literally what the science of bodybuilding exercise is about. It's about achieving full, high intensity muscular contraction. Obviously, the only place you can achieve a full contraction is in the fully contracted position, provided you've got enough weight. Down, get it down, get it down, get it down, get it down. Lock the elbow, take a deep breath, come back under control. Don't lose it now, it's your last exercise. Give it everything you got, even if it hurts a lot. Hold it. All right, that's enough, button it up under control. Viewers don't make the issue of going to failure complicated. If you can do one more positive rep completion in proper form, then that's it. I get phone calls, faxes, emails, letters every day from people wondering what it means to train to failure. You've seen it in many instances here tonight. Marcus, that was a great workout. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you in what, six days or eight days? I think it's gonna be about eight days. Okay, very good, A plus. Yeah. Oh, thanks. We gotta, we gotta make sure that the light is there. What do you wanna put? Yeah. What is the best way to put the barbell? Maybe we'll turn around this way. Maybe we'll move this way. All right, well, let's... 
Let's move. Awesome, Let's yeah. move this. Right, wait, wait. wait. Holy shit, never mind. What is heavy? Yeah, we'll just pivot. Let me pivot this in direct. Ready up your hand down? Oh, yeah, that's, that's an unnatural. Yeah. Michael, let's see the double bicep. The, the famous... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Ray, what's your, what's your uh, thing? Trademark. What is that? What is it that you did? Uh, the, the, the one that Dorian did, yeah. does. All right. Which one? That one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can do that one. Just this one. 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 This Who's that? Really? Okay, five, four, three, two, action. All right, Marcus, this is the last exercise of the workout. I know you're tired, but you're coming into the home stretch. There's no reason to hold back. If there were 10 naked girls here, you'd go to failure. You better believe you're better than a guy. All right, let's go. Make sure the hands facing is equal distance. Very important again for beginners. I've had many clients over the years who will grab the left hand, for instance, too wide, compared to the right hand being inwards. And that sets up an imbalance with the lead to injury. Very good. You see, he makes each breath almost like a set unto itself. He goes down all the way, resets, takes a deep breath, comes back up. You don't bounce the weight off the floor. You wrap your thumb. Ray, why don't we show that demonstration about the importance of wrapping the thumb around the bar? This is very important. I don't understand where this came from. There's people are grabbing bars with the thumb on top. Now he's going to wrap the thumb in a whole time. You see how much more stability and strength is derived by wrapping the thumb around the bar? Beginners, please don't forget that. Right. Intermediate and advanced bodybuilders do. If you made a, a habit out of it, please break that habit. And all your exercises, you wrap the thumb around the bar. All right? This is the last exercise. It is the best exercise in the world because it stimulates more muscles than any other exercise you might pick up. We're going to have them do three warm-ups like we had them do on the incline press because the back is a lower back is what's called a very delicate articulation. You can damage it very easily if you don't pay attention to proper form, especially on this exercise. So, Marcus, step up to the bar. Your feet should be slightly wider than shoulder width. The bar is flush against the shins about 40 minutes every eight days. I'm sorry, less than a straight once every six days now. All right, feeling warmed up? Yes. Let's have you do one rep for 315. Please put another 45 pound plate on the bar, gentlemen. Thank you. Please accurately record the number of reps because even a one rep increase can be Okay, you'll keep rolling. What's the gentleman? Yeah, What's the gentleman? Hey, Ray. The other one? Hey, Ray. Ray. Yeah. Put down just the tape. I can see a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Show, right, show right, me yeah. writing on the pad and the rail. Show you writing? Okay. Writing on the pad. Okay. Tell me when you're starting. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. There's nothing. All right, Marcus. There's no. Hang on one second. 